looks like that's up and running. How are you doing, Marquise? On the way. Oh, yeah, let me, um, well, so the thing is, is that with, uh, you don't need the link to, I mean, we're just doing it as we are now. Um, you want to send the link out to some other folks? Is that what you're talking about? I, I don't have anybody else who can jump in anyway. Um, um, I don't have anybody I would send well to know would jump in anyway. I mean, they're not on on this talk here. Nobody's going to be really jumping in unless they're from part of the audience here. But I'll send you that link anyway, um, so you can check it out. Let me see. I'm going to that uh, right now, and go live here. Where it is? There we go. All right, so she's got it. Well, <clears throat> now, on that link, uh, I, 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 was, I always verify the links just in case. There's nothing on you. <laughs> no, no, no. We're we're live on there right now. Um, I see if my stuff is a guest. <laughs> so. Uh, let me see here. I am going to go to what are these categories going to be on here? We'll just say we'll go leadership and culture. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's call it that. All right. So, Marine Corps. Veteran shares how to claim the benefits. Um, welcome. So, are, I already said your name, Marquise. Uh, is there any reason why you wouldn't want to use your real name while we're talking to you? No, no reason at all, actually. Um, I, I have, I really have no reason at all to, um, to, to you know, to, uh, hide my name at all. <laughs> okay. I, sometimes people are really sensitive about being in the military and sharing information about being in the military. Um, why do you think that is? Okay. I can imagine a thousand reasons. So um, incidences that might happen between you and other enlisted members, like somebody around your rank, or it, heaven knows you might even have um, somebody who's an officer rank who might have a personal issue with you during a past in, uh, deployment. So you never know. Um, I mean, for myself, um, I've never done anything that would make it where I wouldn't disclose myself publicly. So I'm good on that end. Yeah. Um, there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people just get really sensitive about that. And but I, there, there was an, another young lady who was here before. I've forgotten her name. She was very nice, um, but I haven't seen or heard her here for a while. But she was also in the Marines, and she wanted to um, go to school to study to be a uh, forensic um, or a crime scene investigator, something like that she was doing. Anyway, yeah, very sweet. Very field on a bad puncher is a very, uh, a very good uh, you know, like, a tryout. I don't, I don't know if she's still in for not. <laughs> Just throwing that out. Yeah, I think she was, as far as the last time I checked, she was still in. You said combat hunter? Combat Hunter, it, it's pretty much a, uh, it's an urban-based, um, billet. It's not a, like, legitimate billet. Like, you can't, like, enlist in it as it, but you can train and get classes on it. It's pretty much just, like, looking at a, like, if you were in a village, looking at the scenario, seeing whether or not, um, there's anything different from the previous day. Like, the most part that you're trying to look for is, like, what is different from the norm of this village or area I'm in? And is that an indication that there's enemies nearby or not? That's kind of the usual usage of combat hunter. There's other usages, but yeah, I wouldn't be able to solve them. So to find out if, if enemies are, are nearby? Like either they're nearby, they're holding up with 
people, like, like, like they say, there's a family or two that has that's housing the enemy group. That you would usually have to take out into consideration of like, what is the environment we're looking at? Are there kids playing outside today? And if there are, are there kids playing outside tomorrow? That might mean that they understand that there might be an attack today. They're just very basic signs of like possible attacks, possible firefights. It's within like what is the everyday structure of this area I'm in. That that's interesting, and it makes sense though that um, you know that that kind of re- reconnaissance would that would that be fit under the category of recon? It, it, it goes under that area, but it, it doesn't. It's not like it's not specific to that job. Anybody can report on it. Yeah, it's, it's something that they would gather up, and obviously something that maybe they would send at a legitimate combat hunter for. That's a. <laughs> I've never heard that term before. Combat hunter. That sounds. Uh, it, it, for some reason, combat hunter. The first thing that came to my mind was Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie The Predator. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> combat hunter <laughs> you can rewatch it honestly yeah that's um that, that's funny to me <clears throat> combat hunter did you did you do that i wanted to swear to god i would want to sleep. unfortunately i did not get the chance to as a infantry 0311 you're, you're, you're saying your your schedule is just busy. You don't have the time to do extracurricular activities very often, unless you're like one of those special groups that gets picked out for those kind of particular things. I unfortunately was not. I did get like a pamphlet on combat hunter because I was a sociologist. So mm. as a sociologist, you should look at these kind of things anyway. Like what are normal patterns between people? How they interact with people? What is the better way to and you know help environment and the um, culture around like maybe you know do culture fairs or maybe do child fest you never know um the things that a social worker would handle but a combat hunter would actually looking for around the same signals that a social worker would be looking for would just have different ends to the means that's it do you have a degree in sociology I do not. I had a year and a half in sociology. I almost got my associates. I did not. Unfortunately, I changed over to going to the military. Mm. So, but did and but when you were in the Marines, did you work as this? Because you said you were a sociologist. I, I was studying. I did not get the full. Okay. I didn't get the full title or anything like that. I was studying. It, but did you? Um, were you studying that while you? Were, oh no! Wait, well, you started studying sociology and then you went into the Marine Corps. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And did you? I, I didn't get the chance to study further from there on. I was fully engrossed in um, infantry and grunt culture and trying to understand my job, pretty much. Did you do any sociology kind of work while you were in the Marines? Well, for the most part, I mean, um, the mission that I got sent out to do when I was in uh, Sicily, I was stationed in Sicily for deployment, and I went to uh, Africa for a pretty much a um, training mission. I was training neighboring forces on warfare. So in a way, I got to utilize my sociology. I got to understand like their main like city and everything, like how people interacted. There was a lot of tourists and everything. I got to know the daily lives of the police there as I was training them as well. I was trying to make sure that I didn't waste their time. So I, you know, I I, I got to know as much as they were allowed me to. Mm. So in Sicily, and then of course that's you know Italy is close to Africa. Um, what what part of Africa did you go to? I went to Senegal. Um, Senegal, and I trained the police group called the um, Gendarmerie. Oh, Gendarme. Yeah, the Gendarme is from France, yeah. yeah they all speak um, very fluent French. Uh, you may consider it Creole, depending on where you're from. Right. They do speak um, Kofu, uh, Kofu Maku, which mm. is their native language. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, I might be saying it wrong. For me, if I'm wrong, <laughs> I don't know. So, Kofumaku is what you're 
guessing from memory or do, attempt doing your best to recall is the native language in Senegal. Okay, Coastal Fox is actually the government, the military. I actually am messing it up. I'm so sorry. Um, shoot. I'm trying to remember the actual native language. Well, I don't know. Okay. It's, it's another thing to train the Coastal Fox group, which was the military. My group went to train the police, which is the Don Don Marie. Yeah. Well, let me see. Uh, a quick Google search to see. Um... That was it, Wallace. Okay, because you, you know, know you spell it. I'm not sure how to spell it. <laughs> uh, my my brain just goes to Senegalese. <laughs> I, I, I don't know because there's different tribes, so I have no idea which. One. I just know that Wallace was the language I was given the name of. I I, I don't know further from that. <laughs> Let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna put in Senegalese. Native language for Mr. and Mrs. Google's here. All right. Let's see. All right. So we got official language is French. The AI generated, uh, which is generative AI is experimental. Info quality may vary. Let's see. It says Senegal is a multilingual country with 36 languages. The most widely spoken language is Wolof. That's right. That's when you said W-O-L-O-F which is spoken by at least 90% of the population. Wolof is the lingua franca and has been used for administrative duties and in school since the de Jolof empire in the 13th century. That would be the 14th hundreds people. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and welcome to the room. Hello, Lois Hampson is here, Cecilia Grace and Ishekia Harris. Um, welcome for stopping through and or uh, Stopping by and sending a spell or passing through. Welcome to Wisdom. I haven't been on here for a little while, um, but uh, good to see some familiar faces. I'm here with the Marquise, and we're going to be talking about uh, Marine Corps of uh, uh, claiming how to claim the benefits, the Veterans Association, Veterans Affairs benefits, VA benefits. But we were just kind of talking about some cool stuff. I just learned. From Marquise just now about uh, a combat hunter, <laughs> which is really interesting, and some of the other stuff that you've done. Um, you were stationed in Italy and Sicily, and then you went to Senegal to train the Senegalese police, the gendarmerie. Yes. You know, the first time I remember hearing about the gendarmerie was uh, in a documentary. I had, I had a friend, Kevin Green, who was a roommate and a good friend that I met at the University of Miami in Florida. And he used to watch all these like un all these unsolved mysteries documentaries and things like that. And um, I just remember hearing the name gendarmerie, and because the, some of the guys from the gendarmerie in France, they had uh, they were testifying to um, having witnessed um, UFO. Yeah, so the that's the first time I heard the gendarme. I was like, "Wow, that's a cool name. strong name." I won't lie. <laughs> yeah, gendarme. Yeah, I thought it was a cool name, gendarme. Um, the heck's going on here with my 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 device today is uh, really um, acting kind of funny. Anyway, at least we're still we're still live here, as far as I can tell. Um, but none of my. Uh, None of my prompts on my screen here are working. I can't tap into the uh, audience. I can't tap into my comments or anything like that here. That's crazy. Oh, shit. Yeah, earlier, uh, folks, when I attempted to go on to Spreaker, I got an error message that said that the recording function is not available right now. Please try again later. And I... I deleted the app from my iPhone and then re-uploaded it and tried again. And Marquise and I could not get back on for some reason. So, and now my screen here on Wisdom is frozen. I mean, I'm still seeing my little the 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 sound waves moving. So it's obviously picking up the the sound. Um, so for all intent, for all I know, it can it's it's working. Um, anyway, yeah. So we talked about some cool stuff there. So let's continue then Marquise and hopefully this is uh is going all well 
technical difficulties do happen sometimes and we just truck on through them. Um, how long were you enlisted in the Marine Corps? I was, um, I was contracted for four years. I ended up on three. I got out very early. Some situations. So, so you, you left, um, due to, um, like you said, a mental situations, um, is this one of the reasons why you were, uh, forced to claim the VA benefits? Yes, I had to, unfortunately, um, due to pretty much a, I, 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 I don't know how to even describe it better than a, a, a interpretation of my, um, situation. I had to take a year out to get reevaluations and everything. I had to go to the VA, get reevaluated, um, screened by different therapists and everything. Huh. For the first and how was that process for you? Like, was it, was it difficult to navigate? Yeah. It was irritating. It was fine. I mean, it, it did, it did feel like a waste of your <laughs> I was told mental t- multiple times that I should have gotten MedSept when I got AdSept, which is a very big difference as MedSept is much when you have a medical condition of which you need to uh, move from the military. AdSept being you have a situation that you need to be removed from the military, which are very, very different. Um, that's pretty much my situation. That was my situation. Was the whole idea was I was supposed to be medically um, sep from military. So we have these two different categories. You said med sep. Yes. Is that how, how, what are the the letters for that? Is that M E D C E P? Um, I would say med as in M E D, sep as in S E P. Okay. And what what are those? What does that sep stand for? Do you, what are those letters? Would not be able okay. to describe to you. I just know that that's just administrative se- uh, separation. Oh, separation. Oh, separation. So that's what SEP would be. Me- yes, yes, separation. There medical separation. separation. Yeah, how you get discharged. Okay, so medical separation, and then there's administrative separation. So med SEP and ad SEP. Okay, gotcha. And you said the process was annoying, in your words. It was egregious. It's only because of my situation because I was uh, I was um I was initially dubbed a narcissist. They later on um realized it was unspecified depression, not narcissism. That's crazy. As therapist for for about a year to get um to pretty much get evidence that it was unspecified depression for reevaluations. This term narcissist has been become so popularized that when I was in China, after my wife passed, about seven months later, my band was playing in this club called Nine Bar. And I met this, this woman, a local Chinese woman there, and we hit it off really well. And, um, you know, I explained to her, I said, you know, my my wife died. I'm really not in any condition. I was like, I'm, I'm really a mess, but we got together anyway and she became really abusive, but she would call me a narcissist all the time. And while she was physically beating me up, mentally abusing me, calling me names, telling me I was a piece of shit, all this other stuff like that. And it like narc and she would she would watch videos online of um this Indian woman I forget what her name is right now she's a doctor who talks about narcissism all the time, also another guy I think from England or Australia I, I don't remember, um who she used to watch but everything was narcissist she was like obsessed with studying narcissism online her Eng- she's been studying English ever since she was like she was in the second grade, um but to the point where I took the name. Uh, the word narcissist, and I changed my stage name, um, which was Mordecai, M-O-R-D-E-K-A-I, which I used since my death metal band from back in the mid-90s. And then I just <clears throat> called, started calling myself MC Narcissist. Um, and then 
updated MC Narcissus to, con to, to continue holding the name Mordecai. So now it's Mordecai Cain Narcissus. So that's what the MC Narcissus stands for, as well as, M as, as well as Master of Ceremonies, which a lot of MCs call themselves who are the rappers, singers, or speakers. Um, but it, the, the narcissism has become so pervasive that well, I started to just get some comfort from home. I started watching, because I didn't do it before, American television when I was in China. And one of the shows, um, Criminal Minds, you ever heard of that show, Marquise? Yeah, I've heard quite a bit about it. Dude, in almost every single episode, they call one of the serial killers or pe the people that they're hunting a narcissist. Like, it, it, is, it is so entrenched in our society now to, to call people narcissists and use and to weaponize calling someone a narcissist. It's, it's, it's a new Nazi. Narcissist is a new, like anytime you want to discredit somebody or make them look bad, you, you call them a narcissist or a Nazi. And I have a lot on it. I, if you want to continue, that's great. Uh, if you want to continue, I'm shoot, it's just, it's just, <laughs> No, I mean, that's just, that, I was just making that point, a kind of roundabout point about the fact that. Very good point. People really do weaponize the term narcissist. There are so many people in the world. People who literally want your attention to get something are I, I usually are at least on the radar. But people who just simply want to speak to you, talk to you, those are not narcissists. I mean, again, especially if this has nothing to do. I, I, let me not talk too much about this. Um, again, my situation is very different from anybody else's. Um, but the term is used and weaponized a lot. And I I would implore people to take their own time to either talk to a um, a proper therapist or a physicist and just discuss the topic of narcissism. Let somebody who understands the very definition explain to you what the actual signs are because a lot of people nowadays just want to throw it on anybody. Yeah. Literally anybody and it's ridiculous at this point it's pretty crazy how that happens um i just want to say hello to some people who may have entered the room christopher john martins doobie hello doobie uh daryl with the dashes andrew johnson and uh if lois cecilia and if, if shakia are here thanks for guys for um stopping by and sitting a spell and we're passing through um and because i'm having some technical difficulties on my my iphone um, if anybody's there, can you toss up some of those uh, emojis or something like that so I can see? It might not even pop up on my screen, but I'm just trying to check because I'm looking at this on my Android device and I was able, that's the only reason I'm able to see anybody who's passed through the room. I mean, I'm not seeing anything at all, so I have no idea what's going on here. I'm hoping that um, we're getting sound and it's recording, but we'll soon see after, uh, after I get out of here. Marky. Marquise, I appreciate you um, you sharing this with me. Uh, let's let's continue um, with this annoying process, as you called it, of uh, attempting to get your um, your benefits. Hold on, somebody else is calling me. Let's see, how do I do this? You're good. You're good. No, I'm gonna try to let me tell him to call me back. Uh, there we go. My friend William Bonatati, who is, uh, I met him on call-in, and he is uh, an intense researcher, um, and we'll, we'll talk about, talk to him later. Um, I'm going to see if I can reach out to a friend and see if she is, if you guys are able to hear me here on, on Wisdom, but let's, let's continue anyway, because the recording uh, if it is good, I'll just put it on Spreaker and it's all good. So I don't want to take too much time with that. But we've covered so far. One of the things I want to recap. So we talked about MedSEP and ADSEP. And that's M-E-D-S-E-P, which stands for Medical Separation. And ADSEP, A-D-S-E-P, is Administrative Separation. And so t tell me about that. You said that you had issues you ran into where they were going to claim one of those two for you and it, it wasn't appropriate at the time. I had been administratively separated. I was deemed a narcissist, which um, under regular terms would not be considered a disability. It would be something that they considered that I had at birth. 
So narcissism, unfortunately, really did undo a lot of my uh, process. It, it did make my process very quick to get out of the military, but unfortunately, it made it where, like, I would not be able to claim anything. And given my situation, uh, I heavily disagreed with it. That's why I did go out and seek help on this matter. I thankfully did run into the wounded warriors, which they helped me because of the fact that I did take out a year to work with the VA to reevaluate me and get um, pretty much get me a different evaluation, whatever evaluation it was. I was pretty much sure the evaluation I got was not accurate to my condition, pretty much. So, so making the claim that you are a narcissist would have put you on administrative separation and due to that you would not be able to claim any benefits as far as my therapist wrote out he pretty much specified very deeply that my condition was not a disability whatsoever so i tried to kill myself um i I don't wow i don't even know if that's okay to say on this um you can say uh, whatever you want we're not uh I, I don't personally care about censorship. And if wisdom is going to censor you just talking about your experience, um, that's that's their issue. Um, let them let them uh, sort that out. I don't think that you're saying anything that's um, going to be taboo. I mean, I have done talks here openly about my own uh, issues and how um, I've talked about even having extensive plans to take myself out. So I don't know if that's, uh, you're just speaking your truth. So continue to speak your truth, brother. I think we're good here. Back up on this. I got your back up. You got confirmation right here, right now. Whatever I say is fine. I. I, if, if if they try to get you on it, hit me up. You got my number. You know what they. You know you know what to do. Well, I'm not. Cons- yeah. Well, like I said, I'm not concerned about it. But I I want to continue to redirect to you know your challenges in in claiming the benefits. There was a guy. One of the the first time that I actually got onto Wisdom and, and the social uh, audio apps. So Wisdom is social audio call in and Spreaker or call themselves social podcasting. I was here with a guy named Chris who I don't talk to anymore. Um, And, um, you know, he, he did have a lot of problems. um, And I wish that I could have, you know, stayed friends with him, but this is a big issue. You know, he, he got me really into, I, I did a lot of activism on with him and on his behalf in making bringing awareness to the fact that he was the one who first brought the numbers to me, even though my sister, she, you know, she was in the Navy for 20 years. She retired with her benefits, you know, um, and, but he, he was the one who brought to my attention that, you know, 22 veterans a day commit suicide. Is that number, is that a number you know of? I agree with that. He said it, he said it could be as much as 30. I honestly, my experience getting out of the military, I agree with it. I may not know the numbers personally. I can't confirm them, but I, I can at least agree with that. Yeah, that's like, a lot of my buddies tried to end their lives. Uh, my time in, I tried to be there for them, which actually did result in me trying to take my life as well. That's a startling number. Fair hits. Like, at one point, towards the end of my Marine Corps career, I was in charge of a platoon of uh, suicidal ideations. Wait, you were in charge of a platoon of suicidal ideations? At, at the very least, I had notified that they had attempted or thought about attempting suicide. You know, that even that almost sounded like a metaphor for that you were saying that you had so many suicidal ideations in your head that you were in charge of a platoon of those. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I mean, <laughs> of course they popped up, but when they did pop up, it got very, it got very static. 
better 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 to stay my mind was in static at one point um with how many i had to deal with i to be honest i was like i, I didn't even know half i was like i don't even know you i just know you're in my same situation <laughs> yeah so now so back to this whole thing about um so the 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 administrative separation, them labeling you as a narcissist, this got you out for a year. Well, so this got me out. So I had a four year contract, and it got me out a year early. Okay. Because of my mentally, um, a year um, after I got out was used to correct the mental diagnosis that I got during my time in the Marine Corps. Okay. And and how did you go about correcting that diagnosis from them labeling you as a narcissist? To- I just presented the situation. I was like, literally, all I did was just tell them the same thing I told my therapist when I was in the military. All I was so all I told them was I tried to kill myself. I could not help listening to my friends talk about how miserable they were, how they wish they could see their families about the situations that they have been placed into. And I tried to advocate as much as I could for them. I ended up not being able to succeed as much as I wanted to. I was only able to make a few of them be able to see their families at certain times due to them seeing, being suicidal ideation. They were unable to leave the base without certain guidelines being met. Um, I alleviated some of those guidelines, but I was unable to alleviate all of the guidelines for them. And when you said you were able to alleviate some of those guidelines, you mean you, you, you helped these other guys walk through some of the the bureaucracy, the pretty much I I talked to the higher chain of command. I would uh, let them know that I would be accompanying them during their time away from base. Um that if they needed a place to go to, my room was always available. I had a therapist like set up in my room so that if they ever wanted to walk in, you know, class, you know, uh, the, the therapy session was immediately on. Anything they said was always in my room. Nothing they said would ever leave my room. And what, you know, somebody who is a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist or even um a marriage and family therapist they might ask you the question what 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 gives you the right or what made you think that you could set up a situation like that and why was that okay for you to do that like oh right i would i would not i would not take that acknowledgement at all i would never i would if a, a, a trained professional came to me, I would literally tell them I have no license, no right. The only thing I had was consent, and that was it. Good. I would always notify them I was not licensed, I am not professional, I am not anything other than a willing ear. I am a willing ear, I am a willing consultation on my personal thoughts in the matter. You may take them, but you should never take them as professional advice, professional consultation, or anything like that. You should never take it in any other. Again, you should always get verification that the person that you are talking to is an expert at their field, downright, no matter which way it works. I was not. I had consent because of the fact that they were close friends and they were willing to tell me these things. Well, you know, I have a justification for that in some ways in that even though they might have some training, you know, there are crisis hotlines and suicide hotlines that people call and they speak to people who are not licensed medical workers. They're not clinical social workers. They're not marriage and family therapists. They're not psychologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, or medical doctors. So talk about the 988 number. Yeah, Yeah. That just recently came out last year sometime i think late last year or something like that i'm actually um a regular user of that um i actually use it today um not so lot. <laughs> i mean it seems like it's a very important resource and i have uh people close to me um that uh have benefited from it as well i would say honestly if 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 you are fine with talking to anybody who is available to hit you up in your time of crisis, 
go for it. They are that the very I can say this much. They are going to make sure that anything you say will be kept within the phone conversation. Their main people, they will help you out with ever they need a move that they have available to them. Um, but they, they will. They don't have all the extensive help. They cannot help you in an immediate situation. They can, at the very least, help like walk you through your immediate situation if need be to help calm you down. They will do everything in their ability to do so. They may not be able to do everything. But though I do agree with you, if anyone needs them, if anyone needs to call up the 980 number, that is great. If you're a veteran, press 1. That will get you straight to the veteran's hotline. They will do everything they can. They will even set you up with groups. That's a good that's a good resource. So you 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 really believe that it's helpful? It's if you have no one else, it's better than nothing. Yeah. It, it's better than nothing. I know a lot of veterans who ain't got nobody. Yeah. Wish they had a hand reach out to them. And I implore you. 988, press one on that veteran's hotline, they will immediately get you to somebody at the least. You will at least get to talk to somebody about your problems. They will listen to you forever. They, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I, I, um, that's interesting that you say that, that they will talk to you forever because I've, I've, um, experienced some hotlines like that where they'll only talk to you for a certain amount of time, like maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then they say, okay, well, we got to go, and if you really need help, you know, call nine one one or your psychiatrist, your your primary health care giver, or something like that. Great that you noticed that. Um, you are correct. Um, there are people who will literally limit it to thirty minutes, and they will cut off immediately. There's even people who will limit it to uh, fifteen minutes. I will immediately say, at least in my experience, they are assholes. They are big time assholes. Um, they do not understand your situation. They clearly don't care about your situation enough. You can just try the 988 number again, and hopefully you'll get someone who would be willing to take it longer than 30 minutes. Now, now Marquise, do you think that it's because they're assholes, or or do they have some? Do you think that there's some kind of um, like time limit because maybe there's a lot of people calling and that they've been told that they can only talk that long, and and because maybe there's some legal situation or or what do you know about that in my personal experience i've been on the phone with people um i've been on the phone and i remember like at the very least sometimes like till an, uh, two hours to three hours sometimes so i unfortunately i do not agree with the idea that they have a time limit it is based on their discrepancy as far as i'm concerned okay so, if you get any other information, fine. But as far as I'm concerned, I've had at the very least two hours to three hours of long talk time with them. So they they can talk to you for that long if they want to. Or maybe that's what you think that some people may be just be cutting off. Well, I mean, we'll find out. That would be in, that would be an interesting thing for me to to look up um, if there's a time limit on uh, suicide hotline. But I don't want to derail too much from that because we're still getting into. Um, the fact that in order to claim your benefits, so let's let's back up and get a little bit of background on this. So one of the things that happened, because I want to know what happened in order for you to for them to label you as a narcissist, which, as you said, would would have had put you on ADSEP, which is short for Administrative Separation from the Marine Corps, which would have denied you getting your your full disability benefits. What led up to that in the first place? Did you, did something happen and then you made a claim or went to somebody or how did you end, end up getting that designation of administrative separation? And I'm t- saying that you were a narcissist and therefore it put you in a situation where you wouldn't at first be able to claim the benefits. Well, um, in the situation I was in, um, I was uh, like, um, pretty much for my situation, I didn't know whether or not I would be able to claim anything at all until I got out. So for the time being, I was literally just dealing with the administrative separation. I um, I was assigned a therapist to talk to on a regular basis, which was an officer at the time. He was 
very unable to understand the everyday ins and outs of an enlisted member of the um, service um, military and everything. He just did not understand our days and ins and outs and everything like that. He was a Navy officer, so his life was completely different because I, the fact that I was Marine Corps enlisted, it, it was just such a separation. But the thing I learned as I was in the hospital, pretty much processing my attempt to suicide, I remember there was a one-on-one -on -one with a um, an available therapist um, at the. Um, Did you say it was one-on-one -on -one with a doll? I don't know. One-on-one -on -one with an available therapist. <laughs> So it was just somebody who was uh, available at the VA hospital on base. It was just some random person. It may have been a veteran, it may not have been a veteran. Because <laughs> oh, I, I thought I heard you say the word doll, like if you were saying that the person was just sitting there. <laughs> no, that would be hilarious. That would actually be <laughs> quite hilarious to imagine myself with like, oh, talking to a doll. <laughs> oh, but... I I explained to him that um that my years in the Marine Corps had started to get to me that um the deployment had really changed me a lot. I had never started drinking or smoking until after deployment. I just like pretty much explained to him everything that had been going on with me until the come to suicide. And the the man asked me, it's like uh well, what do you want to do? Like, what is it that you want? Like, not the Marine Corps, not the government, nothing else. Just what do you as a person want? And I told him I just wanted to go home. I just, I was just, I was done. There was too much happening. I just couldn't stand it anymore. That I, I wasn't willing to go back to the same place I was working to anymore. I was just, I was willing to finish my contract any way they wanted me to. I just wasn't willing to do the same job anymore. That so, was just it. So, so what? So the thing that led up to your ad, ad sap or administrative separation was the attempted suicide, and then you were interviewed by several people, and in telling them this, you, one of the things you relate to them was that you were willing to finish your contract anyway, other than going back to where you were, and and this is when you're talking about what you were doing before, meaning the Sicily and Senegal's um, uh, deployments? Yes, that was a part of what I was doing. Um, I, as a 0311, my job is to uh, pretty much um, close. Like, pretty much my job is warfare. My job is warfare, to, uh, warfare tactics, anything along the lines of firefights or anything like that. Um, you have, a, here's a, if you play Call of Duty, you have a very good understanding of my regular understanding of like my job. Jeez, my job, not like what I do, but my job because there's not like as if there's um there's no big wars or anything at the moment. Right, right. So, I mean, what was it about your job that you couldn't, that you just didn't want to do anymore, that you couldn't bear? Was it was it the potential for having to engage in combat did you uh, whatever you're comfortable speaking of, did you have to actually fire on people like what was it that really disturbed you the most about it um, the most controversial there are people who are gonna probably hate me but I, I did go i did join in for combat i did join in for warfare i did not join in to just get benefits i joined in to actually conduct my job. I actually had a passion in combat warfare, the idea of an opponent that I have to outsmart, if not, out, you know, completely out strategize, actually did lure me to the Marine Corps. Um, the thing that I actually could not stand is the treatment of all of the enlisted members. At one point, it was actually questionable whether or not we were products or people. <laughs> hmm. Wow. Well, I mean, I've I've heard that before, um, a similar sentiment. And I actually even, I, I'll, I'll maybe share it later, but I actually 
wrote a song and presented it to several enlisted in the Marine Corps, the Army, even a general. And they said, wow, you really um, pegged it there. Like they asked me if I had served, which I, I hadn't. But they said that the the lyrics that you wrote and the way that you presented it were spot on. And even to the point where I actually got to perform it at a, a, a huge uh, media festival where there were other enlisted and military people in the audience who came up to me and spoke to me about it afterwards. Um, and it, that, is, that is fantastic. And, and it was that idea of being a product um, and rather than a person. And so that's what you're saying is how you felt. Yeah. And I mean, what was it inhumane treatment or is it just that they were just kind of making you a cookie cutter killer soldier? Like what, what, what about that process that you disagreed with? Again, anything that you're, because you said that you did and let's see, and even what you just said is even in part, of the lyrics, I, it's, 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 it's incredible, but I'd like to hear what, yeah, what specifically about that disturbed you? Well, it was just the fact that like the, the idea of the military, I, I, would, I, would, I could say again, anyone could disagree me, disagree with me on this, that um, a lot of the military is earning. You have to earn your rights back. Um, every branch you go into, you have zero rights. Um, whatever that branch gives you is what you have rights back to. And from there on, you earn back the rights through your rank. As you rank up, you get more rights. You have more freedom to yourself. You have more availability to do things as you want. You have the ability to change schedules to however you can um, see fit. Um, it, there's a lot that you get um, working through the military. Um, the thing that I did not like was is that throughout the entire time you would be like throughout your from o, o 01 I mean I'm sorry through E1 to E I would say honestly E3 is the worst rank to go through because simply you are treated as one in a million you are always treated as one in a million. What what is E one? Is that that's a private would be like in the army? Like what is E one? Yeah. So um E one would be a private. It would just be a simple private E two. It's um oh we'll see every um military branch has different um titles for right. them. they all relatively go within the same number of rank, but they do have different titles for them. For the Marine Corps, I can tell you that much with confidence. Is um, is E for is E for ensign? E N S enlistment. Oh enlistment, okay, I got gotcha. you that you, did you join the military without any college or anything like that, you were a normal civilian. Okay. So like if you if you had gone to college or done like ROTC or something like that, you'd go in di different, because I went to the Reserve Officer Training Command in high school. Um, it was actually a Navy ROTC, and I even went to a mini boot camp for a week in Orlando where it was a joint um, Marine Corps Navy base before they closed it down. My sister actually graduated from there. And I think 93, 94, 95, and, and after she graduated, they, they shut that base down in Orlando. I don't know if you know about that one. Not because the day she, the, when she graduated, I had just been born. Was, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, um, they, yeah, that's, that's where she went, um, 95. And so, yeah, she retired, I think in, 2016 or 17 something like that after 20 years like i said um okay and so now so we've got this the suicide attempt the the speaking with various uh, officials and different people in the marine corps them labeling you as a narcissist which was an administrative separation this would deny you of any of your benefits. Now, moving from there, you, you then had a year where you were separated and then you had to fight to get your benefits. See, I didn't fight to get my benefits then. I fought to correct my, um, my uh, I don't have the best word for it. Desi uh, maybe I designation? Guess. Yeah, designation, diagnosis. I pretty much fought to change it. Um, 
by he went through a different therapy session like that to the point where um, when I put in the claim I then had a um, bunch of therapy so I got a few months of a session to where they were just collecting evidence at that point but that was only after having to get reevaluated and everything so until like um, 2020 to 2021 I pretty much was just correcting my benefits and in 2021 I put in for my benefits now why is it important as uh, a military veteran why are the why are the benefits important why would that be something that someone needs getting out of the military I just heard this before I'm not sure um it's- it's accountability. Honestly, it's accountability. Um, the things you go through, you may never go through any other job in your life. The injuries and stress you have to deal with, you will never, you may never have, again, never have to deal with in your life before. And those stresses and everything, um, the situations that you're put into, the missions you have to conduct, about uh, injuries that you have, that you go through. Those are things that the military have to take accountability for to the fact that they have to compensate you. So things that are that should not be considered with your income. This is something that should only be considered whether or not you were serving at the time when you received the injury, whether mental or physical. Mm. And so in a, in a way, you feel like because of the things that you have to do in the military, they're accountable for putting those kinds of stress and injuries on you. So therefore the benefits are justified because that's what you experienced in the military. But I mean, some people would argue, well, hey, you you signed up for that. What do you say to that? Yes, actually, I signed up for it just I, I got don't want to sound mean when I say it, but like I signed up for it, but I also signed up for those benefits too. So the things that were in place before I was even born. My great grandfather was able to fight in Vietnam and he gained his benefits after uh, almost a lifetime, uh, I would say maybe maybe 20 years or so of um, trying to get his benefits through before he was fully disabled. Um, It is a Yes, I signed up for it, but at the same time, I also signed up for every danger there to come with the job. Just as much as a contractor for a um, building construction site has to sign up for the possibility that he might actually get harmed. It's always a chance that you can get harmed. There's no job in the world that does not take in that liability that you may end up getting harmed from this. So the military, you are giving a service to other people who are protecting and serving. Whichever your motives are, these things will always be accounted for. You will be protecting, you will be serving. This is an order, this is not a request. And and so that's like similar to why why a lot of jobs, they have workman's comp. You know, just... All right. So, Marquise, I'm going to take a uh, a technical break, and then we're going to do a part two, um, because I just want to make sure that I got to check this recording, and then we can also continue and and finish this off. But I I I definitely want to say I appreciate all that you've shared so far, and we're going to get to the conclusion of this in the next installment, hopefully in a few minutes once I work out all these bugs. Um, we'll stay connected and then I'm going to, uh, come back with a part two. So thank you everybody who stopped by, passed through or sat a spell to listen. Um, this is part one. I'm going to make it of Marine Corps veteran shares, how to claim VA benefits. We haven't gotten to that part just quite yet, but I wanted to get some background. Marquise and I had actually only met, what was it a week or two ago? About a week ago. And so, um, I, I get a lot done in a very short period of time. So it seems like a lifetime has been packed in the time that I met you until now. So many things I'm getting done. So yeah, I'll be returning, uh, with another part of this. I have to check my devices for some reason it, they have been giving me some issues, but we'll be back in a minute. Are you game for that Marquise for a part two? Of course.
course, anytime, anytime. All right, awesome. So I'm gonna. All right, so let me hang up with you for right now. I'm gonna call you back in just a minute. I gotta check what's going on with these devices here. Sound cool? All right, brother. Talk to you in a minute. Talk to you though. Okay. Talk to you though. Yep. All right, that was Marquise, and like I said, I'm going to check out everything here and get to a uh, part two of this. Wondering if I can make this work. Let's see what happens.